Good day and welcome to another segment on the bench. Today I'm going to tie you up uh, one of my favorite Bow River uh, flies here, Bow River Conehead. Um, this fly has been very productive. It's there's many different colors of these flies. It's one of the one of the best ones I've fished on one of the nicest streamers I've fished. A little uh, got a lot of moving parts to it. I'll go over the uh, recipe as we go along. The recipe I'll put on the end of the video for you as well. So let's follow along here. And uh, we'll tie this. I, I've also um, tied in a, a smaller version here. This one's got a magnum rabbit strip on here. This one's got the regular rabbit strip, more of a slender design. And then I put a um, just a, a holographic body on this one, the smaller one. So I'll, I'll fish them both. Depends on the on the water um, and the conditions. So sometimes the large ones work better than the other the thinner ones, but uh, vice versa. So. Getting these ready to fill my box up. We're running a little short of them. There's one of our favorite flies. So let's get to it. We'll uh, get a hook in the vise here. I've got a, it's a size one. That's a streamer hook, a nice straight eye hook. I'm putting a large uh, silver cone head on there. I'm going to use some lead free, 0.35 lead free wire on the body, taking about 20 turns. That'll hold that cone in a place. Make sure you get some little side pliers here. Buy those pretty reasonable anywhere. Little pliers and nippers are always handy, have all kinds of tools. Six aught black thread coming in behind. Just hold the lead up there. This flies heavy, gets down the current where I want it. I want to get it down deep right along the banks as quick as I can. So that's really what's under the fly is probably more important than what's on the fly for materials. A lot of times make sure they're properly weighted and balanced. Okay, now I'm going to come in here. This is a magnum strip. This is in a chinchilla color. Uh, you can go to different colorations, whatever you wish. I'm going to tie it like zonker style. Just leave enough for the top. Get the hair pulled out so I got some bare um, hide there. Like wet your fingers, pull that down, and get some good turns in behind. Then I'm going to cut a V in here, but I'm going to leave that tail about shank length. Should be long enough. I'm going to get it too long. Nice fly to. Fish single hand rods or spay rods, whatever you're using. Make sure that's enough. Yes, it is. Okay. Then I'll bring in some uh, chenille. This is just a white pearl, kind of regular size chenille, not the large, just nothing too big. I don't want to get the body any bulkier than it already is. Tie that down. Then this here is a um, pearl medium pearl gray palmer chenille really nice colorations in this i use this material in a lot of flies salt water fresh water flies whatever i like that and i'll just get my chenille body forward and i do not want to crowd the, behind the cone we're going to do some more work up there leave that a little bit thinner that'll all be covered up bring my palmer chenille just get a few wide turns. Just gives a nice little hackle on there. Tie it off. There we go there. That's all good. Now I'll bring in I'll looking for my uh, legs. So we're going to use some silly legs here. This is kind of a uh, grayish metal flake. Whatever color you like. Cut two off. I'll just fold them in half now. Cut them again, and I got four equal legs. I'll just use two on this one. I'm ready for the next fly. I can pull them in half, tie them on top, and then your legs are basically. Measured up, they should all be equal length. Get two on each side. 
it just kicks along, adds a little extra action to it. Got a little base going there now with my thread for the uh, collar. Then I'm going to use just a throat. This is a fine uh, red flashaboo. Cut that off there. Fold it underneath my thread. Just kind of keep, don't let this go because it'll a little messy. Fold it underneath, catch it under the bottom, and trim it fairly short. And I'll just leave that flash belay in there. I can do several flies with that piece. It's a nice bright color. You can splay it out a little bit if you like. The bottom. A little feature. I'm not going to cover that up with deer hair. Okay. Now I've got that all there. Get a few of these materials out of my way. I want some uh, crystal flash. Here it is. It's kind of a bait. Fishy flash coming in here in a minute. I'll just get my rabbit pulled tight. Pull that down with my thumb. Get a good turn or two in there. Cut the hide off as close as I can to the cone. And then that rabbit will just tuck right underneath the cone head really nice. Then I'll bring in about three or four strands of crystal flash. You can use pearl. This is kind of a bait fishy color. Um, you can use a rainbow as a nice accent on top too. Now I'll just pull that in half again, go right on the top. I've got lots of accent coming underneath in the in the bottom, but I just put this on top and it comes right to the end of the tail. So okay. Now our final step, the fun step is always working with deer hair, and I know a lot of you might have trouble with it. Just keep working with it, it's a great material. This is always on all the Bow River cone heads, Bow River buggers, which is one of the better streamers I've ever come up with. That's a great fly. Been around a long time. Clean out your stacker. Take a bone comb, clean out the under fur of your deer hair. You can take it out by your fingers if you like. Bone combs work great. I get a good stack on it in my hair stacker. Make sure it's not a very good stack there. You can see the tips aren't right. So I'm going to go on my bench and I get a little harder stack. You'll see the tips are really nice and black there. It's a good stack. Make sure you do it properly. I'm going to measure the length of my tips that I want out. I'm going out on the far side. As I wrap to me, I kind of wrap a little different than some days do. And I'll get two soft turns and come around. This, The tips are basically going to be on the top. See that? Just basically on the top. Okay. Got the butts down here. Now I want to trim these butts off anyway, so I'm just going to trim them down. And underneath, there's a lot of bare spots down there to cover up. So I just take that little chunk and pull that under in the bottom. And then you got a nice, and I'm going to trim those butts off in a minute here, but that fills the head up really good. It, I don't want too much hair on the front. I like a display and uh, push a little water, but I don't want to sometimes get too much hair on there. I don't like it. But everybody can do it on their own. Some some prefer longer, and I don't think there's right or wrong way to do that. Okay, and then the whip finish course, tie it off. Pull these butts forward. Get your scissors in there. Make sure you don't cut any legs off. If you're working around the legs, sometimes a good idea. Just get a hold of them with your hand and pull them out of the way while you're trimming in that area. Can't put them back. Now I'll just trim, make sure underneath I want it pretty snug to the body. And then on the sides I start to 
with my legs again. Pull them out of the way. Make sure you trim. The hardest thing about hair is when you when do you stop cutting? And don't take too much of the time. Just work with it. Take a little time trimming your deer hair flies. And once you get onto it a little bit, you'll find deer hair is one of your favorite materials. And there it is, kind of a really nice Bow River bugger. This one here is a little, just a little different version. I think with the Palmer chenille, you can you can do many of your own techniques, or you'll see some materials maybe you like to try as well. They'll work, but it's a it's a great great pattern, and uh, this is my heavier one. Bow River Conehead. So, thanks again for watching. We'll have the recipe right on the end of the video.